So okay, uh, before start, I would like to know uh, among you, how many of you are proper DevOps engineer? Okay, okay, few. Uh, pure developers? Yeah, great. Any QA testers? Yeah, great. Uh, support engineer, maintenance engineer? It's, yeah, it's awesome. Always, or uh, uh, almost everyone is. Uh, here. So, as you can see, my talk is about best strategies to automate different scenarios using different DevOps tools. Uh, as a developer, as a DevOps engineer, as a QA, as a tester, as a maintenance engineer, we have to have uh, perform operations regarding different scenarios in our daily life. So. We have to perform some operations like building machines, doing some operation on top of that. And for that, we require some lot of uh, uh, programming tools, uh, some experience, and basically a courage and time. But if you are lazy, then definitely don't worry because DevOps tools are always there to help you out. So be happy. Okay, since you are happy. But if you can see, this is a DevOps table. There are a lot of tools available like database, CI, deployment, cloud, monitoring tool, logging, release management, collaboration, security, testing, build, repo management, SCM. So, if you see this, then definitely you would be become confused. So today we are going to talk about what are the best strategies which we should follow so that we can automate our different daily tasks. Daily tasks for Dave's QS is admin support team. There are a lot of different tools available, but in this talk, as per the scenario, we will discuss what are the best tools available, what should be the best strategy. And I have some statistics ready in the IT industry, which companies are using which tool frequently for which scenario. So we will discuss about that as well. So starting from requirement gathering, starting from issue tracking till reporting of release of the product. We should use DevOps tools so that our life will be very easy. So that's the main motto of this talk. So okay. So as a project management tool, you people might aware about Jira and open projects. So those are the two uh, tools uh, which are using frequently in nowadays uh, IT industry. So you can see basic difference that uh, using Jira, Jira users can create new issues in pop-up window. And in open project, you can create new issues from the both package list. So here are the basic difference between Jira and open project. So <laughs> you can read this out. We have a lot of things to cover, so I'm not going to explain in detail. But this is basic screenshot of creating issue uh, using Jira. And this is basic uh, screenshot of uh, creating package and creating uh, any issue uh, tracking using a uh, work project. So in work project, we can see there is a GAN, uh, GAN chart where you can actually see the timeline, period, etc. to track your uh, project or any issue. If, you, if we talk about the comparison between Jira and work project, data security and time tracking is one of the major issues here because 
in both Jira and Open Project, there are equal amount of add-ons available. But the thing is, if you go with the Jira, you need to buy some of the add-ons. But with the Open Project, you will have it by default. So that's the main advantage of Open Project over Jira. So many times we need to install OS, but that is apart from provisioning the machine. So on, on the machine, we sometimes need to install the OS using GUI tools. We need to, uh, previously people used to click on uh, next, 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 setting up time and etc. to uh, install any OS using uh, GUI. But there are some tools available using which you can install or install OS and basically automate the scenario during installation of US, uh, OS using uh, those tools. So OpenQA is a tool which is an operating uh, system testing tool. One of the major motto of this is operating system testing. But the thing is, it takes an operating system, ISO or disk image and using it domain specific language. It conducts a series of tests consisting of keyboard and mouse input while analyzing the screen output for specific matches. So it called call it as a needle to ensure the operating system is behaving intended. So basically in very basic terms, uh, they compare the screenshots which we will provide to that tool and as per that screenshot, they will automate the things. Like OpenQA securely is also one of the tool which is currently using uh, frequently, which actually automates any, anything you see on the screen using the image recognition, recognition method to identify GUI elements. So it allows us user to automate GUI interaction by using screenshot. As I mentioned, in OpenQA as well and in Sikuli as well, we can compare the screenshots and we can automate it. So, OpenQA and Sikuli helps you to install or to automate the GUI things. But if you are using a uh, format to provision the machine for physical service or virtual machine, then definitely it will make your life very easy. As you, you could heard uh, the talk about Foreman, uh, Metal as a Service. So definitely Foreman is a very good tool available in the market and which is, uh, which is currently using frequently for provisioning the machine. But the thing is, if you, if, if you are using a Foreman, you definitely cannot deal with the hypervisors. So OVERT is a tool which is currently using to uh, manage the hypervisor level uh, virtual, uh, uh, automation, virtualization level uh, uh, automation. And even foreman have over plugin uh, as we discussed uh, in yesterday's talk. We will also come uh, about provisioning the machine or provisioning the servers on top of cloud or on top of OpenStack. We will come uh, on that part later. So, you guys are mostly aware about configuration and management tools. So there are a lot of discussions where going on in last two, three years, whether the which which is the best configuration and management tool available in the market. There was there was a competition regarding Puppet, Chef, and Ansible. You might aware of that both Puppet and Chef have agent master architecture where Ansible is agentless architecture. So, you could see the difference that uh, for Puppet and Shape, we have Agent ma Master Architecture and their terminologies, their scripting is pretty much harder than Ansible. But Ansible, in uh, let's say since last two years, uh, it's uh, using very frequently and most of the companies currently using Ansible for any configuration and management automation. Uh, Ansible, uh, as, you, as you might know, they have providing lot of models available for the containers as well, for OpenStack as well. And the modules, we uh, need to just pull down and we can 
do our stuff, uh, stuff using uh, Ensworth. So that's the main advantage of Ensworth over the puppet and shape. Still some of the companies or some of the organizations are using puppet and shape as per their requirement. But you can see uh, that, that is a statistic of uh, comparison between Ensworth shape and puppet. So you can see the favorite is around 197 which is a around more than double than the shape and puppet. So even you could see uh, in upstream level if you talk about uh, OpenStack, previously they were using puppet but now they are using Ansible. You can see the fans, boards and jobs which is far more than around twice than the shape and puppet. Ansible Tower, how many of you heard about Ansible Tower? Okay, <coughs> almost half. So I will talk quick, quickly about this. So Ansible, you know, it is a configuration and management tool. We can write playbooks. It is agentless and we can directly deploy, directly manage whatever we want to manage, manage on the different servers. But if you not interested in Doing CLI part, Ansible provides you uh, Ansible Tower, which is basically uh, you have a wrapper on top of Ansible, where you can see your Ansible playbooks, Ansible jobs are running. You can schedule it. You can write uh, the playbooks over here, and it makes your life easy for usage of Ansible. So that's the main motive of Ansible Tower. So currently, a lot of companies are using Ansible Tower as well because uh, uh, Red Hat also have a lot of uh, support available for Ansible Tower. So, yeah, you can try it out because uh, it's a very uh, frequently using tool uh, in the market. Okay, so infrared, you already aware about that. How many of you aware about infrared? You. Okay. So it's basically like uh, uh, it's basically feature by provided by Ansible uh, like CLI and doing such some stuff over using uh, infrared. You can directly uh, deploy your jobs using Ansible. Okay. So if you are using any cloud, I will be mostly talking about OpenStack because uh, I'm a redactor and I support uh, open source. So how many of you are aware about Drupal open OpenStack on OpenStack? Okay, only one. So basically, OpenStack is a private cloud. So previously, uh, before two, three years back, uh, there are three basic nodes are requiring OpenStack if you want to deploy OpenStack. So there were like three nodes, like network node, compute node, and your database node. So those three nodes should be there for to complete the OpenStack. And previously, we had to deploy those three nodes separately. But since last two years maybe, uh, Triple O came into picture where OpenStack on OpenStack, they have deployed, uh, let's say you have only one machine with lot of uh, required hardware, resources and whatever the load which you had to manage separately uh, pre previously using uh, triple o you can manage install deploy in single machine so that's the main advantage of triple o many companies are using triple o instead of openstack they you just need to uh, do some stuff and install uh, under cloud and on top of that they deploy over cloud. So that's the main difference between uh, previously used OpenStack and Triple O. How many of you are aware about RDO? Uh, okay. So you might have found uh, the booth in our exhibition area. If you haven't been there, please go there. So RDO is RPM based distribution of OpenStack. It's a basically a community which supports to deploy OpenStack on CentOS, Fedora, and Rail. Basically, uh, a RPM based Linux. And 
they have good support as well, good community as well. <laughs> so if you want to deploy OpenStack on top of Rails, CentOS or Fedora, any RPM based Linux, please go with RDO. So that's the current happening thing in the market that people are using RDO instead of uh, OpenStack. Heat template, any one of you aware about heat templates? Okay, great. So, heat template, heat, heat template is basically an orchestration tool provided by OpenStack using which you can orchestrate the server deployment or anything you want to deploy or configure on top of that server or anything you want to uh, play with the OpenStack, heat templates are the best options. They also have user data section over there where you can directly write your own scripts like shell scripts and all. And when the server will get deployed on top of OpenStack, the template will run that user data section. And let's say uh, on top of ser that server, we need to set up like Puppet, we need to set up like uh, any database tool or any tool. Then it will, uh, it will get deployed as soon as the server will get deployed. So that's the main advantage of uh, heat templates. Uh, many OpenStack users are using heat templates. Tempest is also a plugin provided by OpenStack. Uh, any, anyone aware about Tempest? Okay, so it's a basically a testing plugin provided by uh, OpenStack where they have written a test, API based test for each and every plugins of OpenStack. Whatever, let's say uh, you have deployed OpenStack and you need to test something whether some particular plugin or component is working fine or not, communication is going well or not, networking is working fine or not, then Tempest have a lot of tests available, API based just need to run the Tempest test to test the scenario. Now we come uh, towards the containerization part where you could see uh, since last one or one year or uh, two years, many companies are containerizing their services, their applications. So you might have aware about Kubernetes, Swarm and Compose, you heard about Kubernetes in previous talk. So basically these are the orchestration tools uh, using which you can manage the containers, orchestrate the containers. So I found some of the interesting different uh, difference points between those three uh, orchestration tools for containers. But if you see since last one year or two year, community wise and overall support wise, Kubernetes is very much larger than Swarm and Compose. The Swarm and Compose is about to die because Kubernetes is providing a lot of, lot of features for managing or orchestrating the containers. <laughs> okay, so have you guys aware about OpenShift? So it's basically we can say a wrapper on top of Kubernetes which makes developers life easy to manage the containers through Kubernetes. Did you get it? Okay. And even IDO provides some mechanism to deploy OpenShift on top of OpenStack. So if you just deploy OpenStack, uh, sorry OpenShift, you cannot play with uh, the infra, but if you deploy OpenShift on top of OpenStack, then definitely you can play with infra and cloud as well. Uh, OpenStack, uh, sorry, OpenShift origin is a upstream uh, product and an enterprise level OpenShift is a downstream enterprise level product. And Red Hat is also providing support for OpenShift. So OpenShift is basically a wrapper on top of Kubernetes. So handling Kubernetes commands is sometimes maybe very hard, but using, uh, using OpenShift, we can do it, it easily. Even top of OpenShift, we, we have OpenShift IO. You might have aware about OpenShift IO. Anyone? OpenShift IO. Okay. So OpenShift IO is basically like an IDE for OpenShift, which basically makes your life easy to handle.
handle or manage the OpenShift. So you can read about OpenShift IO, OpenShift Online, OpenShift Dedicated, OpenShift. Okay, so we have this then. We need to go for that. So basically, here I am trying to show the example if you deploy a particular container and you want to see if the particular container is working fine or not as per the expectations. Then you can write your scripts, testing scripts here in the Docker file itself. So that if you deploy a machine or if you deploy a container, then at the time of building container, the test will execute and script will execute and you, you, you will get to know that whether the, uh, your test cases are passed or not. DGOS, anyone aware about DGOS or DGOS tool? Okay. So DGOS uh, is a tool basically, uh, it provides you a functionality to test your application in CLI level. They provides us a, a interface, command line interface, using which we can write some rules or in YAML or JSON format. What it exactly does is, whatever we write in YAML or JSON, they check whether the particular rules are working fine or not. Rules are related to uh, mostly users, groups, packages, services, HTTP. I will show you examples so that you will get to know more clearly. DGOS is basically a, a wrapper on uh, top of DGOS for the containers. It is the containers. So let's say DGOS edit, Golang, Golang is the name of uh, the container. And they have provided a, they, they, they will provide us some interface to write the YAML or JSON format. So here you can see I write, I wrote a rule, app running true. And after that, I have written some of the uh, some of the rules for port, TCP ADAT is running, uh, listening or not, process is running true or not, HTTP. So, and then you could see the, when we do DGOS run, you could see Container is running, running test, uh, process, app is running, port is listening. So that kind of testing can be done using DGOS. So it's a very good tool available uh, in the market and many IT industries are using that tool to test the containers. Monitoring tools, we already know uh, many people are using NagyOS and JMeter as well. Uh, Monitor.us is also a good tool. New Relic is also good tool, but our, as a Red Hat, we don't uh, encourage you to go for New Relic because it's not an open source. A building tool, you can see uh, there are top rated build automation tools include Gradle, Team City, Travis CI, Jenkins. There are other build automation tools, Circle CI, Bamboo, and Apache Maven. Databases. Okay, so you might have heard about uh, Redis. So Redis is a basically a database. Many top level applications are using it like Twitter, Instagram, GitHub, Stack Overflow. So it's basically, it don't have uh, uh, the engine, database engine like MySQL have. And it's a main memory database. So uh, it is very fast as compared to MySQL. And for MySQL database, uh, we, uh, many companies are using MongoDB and Cassandra. Cassandra is mostly using uh, for uh, cluster-based architecture and where we actually don't want any single point failure. So whenever there are uh, some servers of uh, databases and one of the server, let's say, will go down, then definitely sir, Cassandra have, will provide us uh, a different server with a backup. So that's the main advantage of uh, Cassandra. Earl stack, you already might aware about it, many people are uh, using Earl stack for different different reasons. It mainly deals with uh, the searching, with the database, then logging and then the your visualization terms. Many people are use, also using this Earl stack for reporting, uh, as a reporting tool as well. So because it, it will provide some uh, graph, uh, great graphical structure like wire diagram, graphs, etc. So if you talk about dev DevOps, then definitely you can't Proceed further if you don't talk about Earlstack. And CI CD, we already know about it. Uh, we, many uh, companies are using Travis CI, Jenkins, etc. And as a report, uh, people are using BERT, Jasper report as a tool. But 
I I can show you one tool which is like uh, his name is Alio Report, which is mainly used for showing where some tests are run, are passing or not. So if you want to test something or if you want to do unit testing, dev testing, then definitely it would be the good tool because they will provide you uh, good graphic uh, graphical structure like uh, let's say you, you could see uh, there are uh, pie diagram and overall graph and the main thing is it can be easily integrated changes okay so that's the thing i wanted to show with you and thank you any questions if you have Yeah, so for configuration manager, from sort because uh, I didn't see it in the comparison list. Yeah, so basically it's it is a good tool, but the thing is community wise and support wise, as well have good support, and the a company which are using Linux, they would go with the as well because as well have a lot of good support. As as a red hat, I would prefer. Any other question? Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. So next session will be on the Karate Framework.